Al Jafari stresses from New York that our national media and TV carriers were targeted by terrorists in order to silence the voice of truth. Army units attack Al Nusra dens in Derha and Kunaitira countryside, killing dozens of terrorists. The Iraqi army continues to advance in Al-Ramadi, killing and wounding scores of ISIL terrorists. Good afternoon. Syria's permanent representative to the UN, Dr. Bashar Jafari, has said the unprecedented propaganda campaign against Syria, which has continued for the fifth year in a row, aimed at instigating terrorism and violence and spreading sedition and fabrications about the events in Syria, in flagrant violation of UN Security Council's resolutions and the ethics of media work. Addressing an open session at the UN Security Council held under the title Protection of Civilians in Armed Conflicts, Jafari said such channels have promoted terrorism and encouraged the dispatch of foreign terrorists into Syria. This campaign, Jafari added, has been accompanied by attempts to silence Syrian news media through targeting its institutions and assassinating its personnel, killing so far 33 journalists and wounding and kidnapping many others. He referred to certain influential UN Security Council states that continue to brag about training in Turkey and Jordan members of terrorist organizations to be sent to Syria. Jaffari pointed out that the Syrian government maintained an open approach towards news media and issued in the early weeks of the crisis a new law as a step of reform that aims at enhancing information performance. He added that the government still receives the news media personnel who are willing to enter the country legally via the official border crossings. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif stressed that the so-called international alliance led by the U.S. has failed to defeat ISIL terrorist group. Zarif's statements came during his participation in the 42nd conference of the Islamic Cooperation Organization held in Kuwait to discuss regional crises, especially terrorism and Saudi aggression on Yemen. The Iranian minister retweeted his country's stand about the necessity of finding political solutions to the region's problems, because using military force may encourage terrorism. Zarif pointed out that all the countries taking part in the conference stressed the importance of stopping military operations in Yemen and finding a political solution away from any foreign intervention. In future evidence of the role of the United States and its allies in the creation of terrorist networks in the world and the support they provide them in Syria and Iraq, Republican senator and candidate for the upcoming presidential in the United States, Rand Paul, admitted responsibility for the Republican Party in the emergence of Daesh in Syria and Iraq. He said ISIS exists and grew stronger because of the hawks in our party who gave arms indiscriminately and most of those arms were snatched up by ISIS. These hawks also wanted to bomb Assad, which would have made ISIS's job even easier. They created these people. ISIS is all over Libya because these same hawks in my party loved, they loved Hillary Clinton's war in, in, in Libya. They just wanted more of it. But Libya is a failed state and it's a disaster. Iraq really is a failed state. Several Nusra terrorists have been killed or wounded and their weapons destroyed in Al Hamadiya in Qunaitira western countryside. In Daraha northwestern suburb, the Syrian Arab army also destroyed terrorist hideouts, eliminating many gunmen and destroying two motor guns and vehicles in Kefer Shemes. The army also inflicted heavy losses on the terrorists in Zemrin and carried out special operations in three sites downtown Daraha, killing and injuring many armed men. The Iraqi Air Force has targeted ISIL sites south of Tikrit and Al Qa'im west of the country, eliminating a number of terrorists. The army also destroyed the terrorist hideout south of Tikrit, killing scores of ISIL members as fierce battles are still being waged 
in Al Jazeera district west of Samarra. The Iraqi army, it is to be noted, has scored successive victories over the terrorists in the past 24 hours, so far killing 227 armed men, particularly the so-called Minister of War during airstrikes in Salahuddin and Al Mosul. Saudi warplanes conducted more airstrikes against Yemen's si cities and towns, killing dozens of innocent civilians, mostly women and children. The airstrike targeted Sanha, Saada, Hajja, and Hadida, destroying scores of houses and public buildings. Meanwhile, the Yemeni army, in cooperation with the people's defense groups, broke into Tawliq military base in the Saudi cities of Jizan, scoring direct hits. Israeli occupation troops broke into a number of towns and villages in the West Bank and arrested a number of Palestinians in Janin and Umm al-Sharia near Ramallah. In occupied Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem, Israeli military vehicles broke into al Yasubiya town and detained a number of citizens threatening to close all entrances into Ibrahimi Mosque and preventing Palestinians any access to it. Ladies and gentlemen, with this we reached the end of our news. Thank you for watching. And now over to latest business and market news with Serena, but after a short break. Good afternoon. Within the framework of the Understanding Memorandum, which is organized by the Livestock Development Directorate and the National Center of Agriculture, which aims at improving the livelihood reality of the rural families, the Ministry of Agriculture held a workshop for the survey results of the Livestock Development Project. This workshop was held to spotlight the breeder's reality in addition to overcome the obstacles that faced them to improve the livestock sector. That in turn contributes improving the rural family's income and decreasing the poverty level. However, the Ministry of Agriculture asserted the importance of such projects that's playing a major role in increasing the cattle production. The Central Bank of Syria has set the exchange rate of the U.S. dollar against the Syrian pound at 266.21 for the banks and 266.32 for the exchange companies. The Central Bank of Syria has also set the exchange rate of the U.S. dollar against the Syrian pound for transfer, transfers at 270. On the other hand, the euro exchange rate against, against the Syrian pound was set at 290.14 for the banks and 290.27 for the exchange companies. The figures of the Turkish Finance Ministry showed that the budget deficit reached 4.1 billion Turkish lira in the first quarter of this year. According to the Turkish newspaper Zaman, the economists expected the deficit to increase to reach 14 billion liras until the parliament elections date next month. And later the government's taxes will be increased in addition to reducing the subsidies of the poor. The economic growth has witnessed a noticeable decline as the Turkish lira exchange rate has decreased due to the corruption scandals of Erdogan's government that led investors to lose their trust in Turkey. Crude oil prices recovered today after a two-day slide, although high U.S. stocks and strong global production along with a firm dollar were keeping markets under pressure. European equities fell while the yen weakened to a 12-year low. Japan's Nikkei share average, on the other hand, rose today, extending its gains to a 10th day as investors hoped exporters' earnings will rise after the dollar hit its highest against the yen since December 2002. Gold struggled to recover from a two-week low today as a robust dollar and the prospects of higher U.S. interest rates dented demand for the metal.
The dollar hit its highest since December 2002 against the yen today, due to expectations that the U.S. interest rates will rise later this year. With this we conclude our economic news for today. Thank you for watching and goodbye.